Now to the front pages. Um, Sunday Times leading on a story about this WikiLeaks uh, story. We don't really know what it's all about yet, but it says Britain fears Islamic fury over the leaks. It's got a nice picture of the snow there. Scotland on Sunday, on the same snowy theme, tells us that up in Scotland, criminals uh, who've got community services are going to be dragooned into snow clearing, uh, according to the Scottish National Party government there. Sunday Telegraph is leading on Prince William saying, let my father become king, and dismissing any talk of hopping from the Queen to himself. Um, the Observer has that hospital story we were hearing about in the news. The Mail on Sunday, breastfeed your baby in the office, though that's not compulsory, I don't think. Yep. Wagner of the X Factor <laughs> says it's a plot to get me. He's being bullied out of the show. Some of us would say not half fast enough. As promised, Anne Widdicombe and Simon Hoggett are here to review the newspapers. Simon, your first story. Well, we're looking at the Observer here. Um, the hospitals that shame the NHS, 19, have death rates apparently far higher than they ought to be. And no doubt we'll hear from Andrew Lansley shortly about what his plans are to face this. But mm. it just seems to me, I'm getting to the age where you spend rather more time in hospitals than you would wish to. Yeah. And what you need, I think, is just a dose of common sense. I mean, a year or so back, my dad had a broken hip. He's 92. And he was literally screaming in agony in the bed. And we were desperate to find something for him. And the nurses were perfectly nice, but they said the pharmacy's closed and we can't get a doctor to prescribe anything. So he had to wait for an hour before he got the pills. You know, you don't need an elaborate system. You just need somebody yeah, with a yeah. bit of common sense. Somebody in charge. Well, what you need is ward sister, right? There's often a lot of emphasis on matron. That actually isn't where the problem lies. The real problem is there's no supervision on the wards. So people can be in pain, people can be in, in their own mess. People's drips have run out. And there isn't ward sister going round saying, nurse, that drip's run out. Nurse, are you sure that patient has taken his pills? Nurse, that patient hasn't eaten anything because she's too busy either nursing herself because there's a shortage or commissioning blankets and bandages and filling up umpteen forms. If you had ward sister back, you wouldn't need all these expensive you know bureaucratic solutions. Well, we'll put that directly to Andrew Lansley later Please on. Please do. I certainly will. Um, and another story, your first story, is about the, the breastfeeding your baby at work story. Do you know, I could absolutely weep. We have a Conservative administration, and all I'm reading in the papers today is about the intervention of the state. Uh, the state is going to set a minimum price for alcohol. The state is going to prescribe the colour of cigarettes. And now we've got the state actually saying to employers, in a time of recession, you must provide paid breaks, paid facilities, a special fridge for express milk and goodness knows what else, uh, for women returning to work who've decided on their own responsibility, presumably, uh, to have a child. Now, it, it is not appropriate for the state to micromanage our lives as they are doing. Simon. Well, yes, I, I, you're being a little unfair. Oh, I don't think way. so. Oh, I think you are. I mean, for a start, a fridge, which you make it sound as if they've got to provide free caviar for all these people, a fridge costs about £40 at John Lewis or something like that, yeah. so that's not a problem at all. And, frankly, we, we're always demanding that people do more and more work. That's fine if they're going to. They should be allowed to go in and they should be allowed to breastfeed their babies. It seems to be a... At the employer's minor... expense, that they have to have three-quarters of an hour off no. three times a day? No, the employer doesn't have to employ those people. I, I ah, do realise there's a problem. There, there, you, you might you say, put your finger oh, you can't, you can't yeah. come to work for me because you're, you're pregnant or you've got well, a baby. You can't do that. The law says you can't. Well, so employers have no choice, actually. Are you basically saying that women who have children this is this can't is work? This is, this is, we could talk about this the Women have been having children for donkey's years and have still managed to work. This is the state micromanaging. I mean, it's even in our rubbish. It's everywhere. Right. And uh, another story about the state under pressure, if not micromanaging, this strange WikiLeaks story, Sam, you work for The Guardian. The Guardian is one of, one of the papers, I think, tomorrow, That's which right. is going to have huge quantities of these leaked documents about, from the, the US State Department, I think, mainly. The entire paper has been emptied, for, uh, uh, emptied in order to put this stuff in. Uh, but well we, worth reading, I may say, as The Guardian. He says, right. but we don't actually, at this point, know exactly what it's going to say, except the sort of echoes through all today's papers saying it's going to be very embarrassing, it's going to be very dangerous. Yes, indeed, and they're going to give the candid American views of world leaders, and indeed the reverse too, in many cases of world hoot. leaders. It should be very, very funny, very amusing for those of us who aren't actually named in the thing. And there's going to be some embarrassment, certainly for Gordon Brown, but even more so for David Cameron, who I think uh, uh, 
was not very, very highly regarded by the Obama administration or by uh, the U.S. ambassador here. But that's, that's all going to emerge. The thing is, what we're learning now, though, is what the ambassadors clearly didn't know is that in an electronic age, there is no mm. privacy at all. No. You that's must not put anything in an email or any kind of electronic communication that you wouldn't want to see on, a, on an advertising uh, This hoarding. is bad for government, yes. isn't it? It's, it's appalling for government. Uh, today, diplomacy, tomorrow, intelligence. Yeah. You know, what, are, what information are you going to be able to exchange and know that it is safe? And I think there is now a responsibility on people uh, to think very hard before making these sorts of exposures. Yes, we may all get a laugh tomorrow about what world leader thinks mm. what of whom. That actually isn't the point. There is a very serious danger here of simply too much information becoming available. There is such a thing as too much information becoming available. Because and the world does have to operate with diplomacy and with intelligence. Presumably, when you were a minister, you would want to have had really candid, open, yes. frank discussions yes. with your officials where you thought the unthinkable, you said some things yes. you wouldn't want to see in print, and this is becoming impossible. Uh, absolutely, uh, and you would do that all the time. And certainly, if you've got a sensitive foreign mission, you do want their ambassador mm. to be very candid with you, not to write in the way that you would write if you didn't want the person receiving it to, uh, to make any deductions. Nonetheless, we will all pick up our papers tomorrow and read it. Next Great story, time. Simon. I just want to say, by the way, very briefly, that the, um, the, the, all that material, 250,000 emails, is on a, a memory stick the size of my thumbnail. Absolutely astonishing. Yeah. And um, it was leaked, it was hacked into by a private, a private. Now, you know, this is the US government complaining, and they, they have absolutely no security whatsoever. Yeah. Bizarre. Okay. Oh, yes. Well, the Daily Mail, sorry, the Mail on Sunday, is uh, warning us against Berlin time. I love the way that it's uh, uh, in black letter writing to make it look as if uh, going... Red letter writing. Red letter writing. Well, sorry, yes, of yeah. course. But gothic, it's called gothic, gothic, gothic writing. Gothic, gothic lettering, yes. Yeah. Uh, they're obviously taking the view that if we were to put the clocks forward by one hour, it would be the equivalent of coming under the Hitler jackboot. Yeah. Uh, it could, you could call it... Paris time or somewhere nice like Milan time, but no, it's Berlin time. <laughs> They're really obsessed because uh, it would mean that you could still read a paper in the uh, right. uh, in Glasgow at midnight uh, in yeah. the middle of summer. Yeah, um, we should we should we should keep moving on. Um, I think the, the the royal wedding, the the, the royal story, and we were going to be talking about, were we, or not? Uh, I was going to be talking about the Christian facing well, persecution. Do, 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 let's in do this one. Let's do this one first, then. This, okay. is, a, this is a really interesting story. Um, and I think it's quite a worrying story, actually, because this is about a Christian woman facing death in Pakistan. But the interesting thing about this is she is not an apostate. Now we're quite used to reading stories uh, uh, from uh, fundamentalist regimes about apostates facing the death penalty. This woman is facing the death penalty just for being a Christian in the first place, um, and not, in fact, for proselytizing, not, not for doing anything of that sort. Uh, and I think what it reflects is the prevailing mood in Pakistan, mm. uh, and a mood which is itself, you know, replicated elsewhere. So uh, I think as an indication uh, of, of dealing with um, fundamental Islam, this is a pretty worrying story. It means you cannot is. be a Christian in Pakistan. In which takes us through to the debate between Christopher Hitchens and Tony Blair in Toronto the other day, which is Again, reported in today's all papers the, a lot, yeah. In today's papers, it's a great length. Uh, Blair seems to have sat there rather like a, a rabbit caught in headlamps as Hitchens piled in the... At one point, Blair said something like, um, uh, well, uh, religious people have done marvellous mm. work crossing the religious divide in Northern Ireland, which, of course, a gift to Hitchens, who said, well, what created the religious divide in the first place? It seems to have been an extraordinary Mm. debate with the thousands of people cramming in to hear it. There's yeah, a real interest yeah, in religion yeah, these days. Yeah, yeah. You've, I mean, you've got a book out at the moment of, of your sort of um, uh, anecdotes and stories and long lunches over the years That's as right, a journalist, yes. which features Northern Ireland. Indeed. Um, but I just want, of all the things that you've done, it seemed to me that the news quiz on Radio 4 was probably the most fun. Oh, it was the most enormous fun, yes. And what a loss we've had with uh, Alan Corrin and Linda Smith, both of yes, them died. Been. And uh, Linda was a genius. I mean, it's her one-off line is like, uh, I come from Erith, it's not twinned with anywhere, but it does have a suicide pact with Dagenham. <laughs> 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 most, most of the stories are completely unrepeatable at this time in the morning, or any other time, I have to say, <laughs> on BBC One. Um, let's move on. The Prince William story, uh, we should mention, um, saying that his 
his father should become king. Yes, he's saying uh, that uh, whatever the pressure that he should uh, skip, a, the royal family should skip a generation. He's saying, no, my father's waited long enough and he should have it. You've got to remember the royal family are the most traditional people in Britain. There is no one who places more importance on what's been done before. That's why, of course, the, the um, abdication of Edward VIII is still such a tremendously sore point. The line that struck me, though, is that uh, one of the courtiers, presumably someone quite close to Prince William, says he feels himself to be very low down the food chain. Excuse me, he's second in line to the throne. <laughs> <laughs> Why, where does that place Where's the rest of us? us? Exactly. <laughs> but what is this debate about Charles succeeding? I mean, Charles will succeed if he's alive when the Queen dies. Uh, I mean, it's, there not isn't, a, it's not there a democratic a, vote, no, is it? No, it's not going to be a plebiscite on the subject. He's going to succeed. So I don't really quite understand why such acres of news printing, in, including banner headlines, is, is being devoted well, to Well, a lot of the media are very anti-Charles, of course. I mean, there is a kind of an agenda here, isn't there? Um, 